Hey everybody, how's it going? Chuck here. Okay, what you're looking at is the back end of a 5.0 block 302 Mustang. No, it's not the Jeep this time. But what I'm going to show you guys pretty much applies by any motor that is a uh, stick shift, be it 3 speed, 4 speed, 5 speed manual, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, you see, I don't have the rear main seal in yet, so I fixed a pop it in for you. And then I'm going to show you guys how to use the clutch alignment tool. Now, if you refer back to my Jeep video when we put the clutch in, and I'll put a link to it somewhere along in here. You see how I used it on the Jeep, but since we got the motor swinging out here in the wide open, I can give you guys a better feel and a better show as to how exactly that uh, clutch alignment tool works. So I'll be with you in just a moment. I'm going to knock that seal in. Alright, here's your rear main seal. This engine is simply loop right here. It's like a lithium grease, but it's got the graphite, and pre uh, graphite anises and stuff in it. I use this stuff for everything. It's great. But what you want to do is you don't want your rear main seal to start up dry because you've got that rough edge. It's not really a rough edge, it's just it's a dry edge. If it spins on that crank, it really tears up the seal. So you put you a little bit of lube on there. And you can use like a good engine oil or something like that too. But this stuff seems to hang in real well until everything's seed in. Nothing. It says it's engine assembly, but it's pretty heavy stuff. If you're going to build the engine and start it up pretty quick, you don't necessarily have to use anything this thick. But actually, I built this engine. It's been a while now. And I'm just decided to put the Mustang back together. And I thought it was a good time to show you guys how to really put it in a clutch from the outside where I can show you all the details. Alright, you see, I've got it just kind of smeared on it. It ain't like outrageously heavy. Slide it up around the back end of the crank. It wants to be cranky. Huh, oh, crank, cranky. I made it funny. At this point, you just want to go around and tap it into the block. And it'll get to that point. Then you just want to walk it the rest of the way around. You don't have to hit it hard. You just want to love tap it in. Then once it gets in there, you can see it. You can see how it's wanting to walk back out. And don't worry, everybody. Just because I'm working on a Ford, don't mean the Jeep videos are over with. I got some things coming up for you. But like I said, this pretty much pertains to any type of motor you want to work on that has a rear one piece rear main seal. And clutch assemblies, they're all pretty much the same as far as how you put them in. Alright, so I've tapped it in, seated in. And the clutch, the uh, seal only going so far as a lip back in the back side of the block that it, it bottoms out on. So you really can't drive too far. Once it stops, don't we keep beating on it because you're just going to do nothing but bend all that metal that's in right here. So the next thing we're going to have to do. Polish shaft bearing. Now these can be either easy or make you want to invent new words. But what I've got here, see the outer surface that's bearing here, this socket fits over that. So we're not going to actually beat up on the bearing here. It just beats on the casing here. So that makes it good to go. So we're going to sit that under like that. See, it's kind of going to kind of cock the ass, see if we can get it centered. All right. Be careful not to hit this right here because you don't want to knock that out of whack. And keep your socket centered too so you're not hitting that bearing. Okay, that's seated. Then you take your chicken bearing, everything's all taken good. And it's already packed with grease, but it doesn't hurt to put a little extra side there. So, okay, we got that set. So we back where you just met, we're gonna set the flywheel. Okay, we're gonna set the flywheel. Now the Jeeps don't necessarily do this, but these 302 blocks do. These holes are at certain spacings, so your flywheel actually goes on a certain way. 
and what you do is you get it set up in line and if you see the holes rotate just a little bit okay right now they're all lined up so if we was to you throw it up there and you start rotating and you look okay you see you got these holes are lined up and these holes are lined up this right here is like way out of whack so basically you just keep rotating the flywheel until you see all your all six holes are lined up just like that and just set your bolts in so I'm going to tighten these bolts up and I'll be right back with you in a moment Alright, what you're looking at here is the back side of another uh, 302 flywheel. Now, I showed you just a, a shot a moment ago how these hole spacings here are different. And there's a reason for that. Some motors are internally balanced, some are external balanced. This one's an external balance. See this big chunk of metal right here? How it's kind of offset? Well, it works in coordination with your harmonic balancer and the crank to balance the internal assembly of the motor. But any kind of motor that's externally balanced, you don't have an option. These holes only line up one way, so there's no way to really mess it up. But I didn't show that to you just a moment ago when I put the uh, bolts in the flywheel. So I grabbed another flywheel real quick just to show you the difference. Alright, now that we got the flywheel all tightened down, and what we got here is the clutch alignment tool. And often and the Jeeps actually do come with two different ones because some of the uh, 4.0 Jeeps have a smaller, this pilot bearing right here. It depends on which one your input shaft is as to which clutch you use. And I think it may actually have a difference between the AX15 transmission and the AX5. But the AX5 coming out behind the four cylinders. Well, this being a 302, here's pretty much your only alignment shaft. And it's simply you just slide it up inside there, bottom it out. It goes up into the pilot bearing back in behind here. You see where that shaft's going in. Push it in. Push the clutch up flush with the flywheel. And there is no right or wrong way. As long as your clutch is lined up inside there, you're good to go. Now, then you take the uh, pressure plate and I think it shows one of the holes here, I believe. And get your bolt started. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we use the climber tool to line the clutch up. Then this right here sets up and get your bolt started. They're just fingers started right now. They're not even touching, most places not even touching the uh, pressure plate. But at this point, what you want to do is crisscross. Tighten this a few turns. Come over here, tighten that a few turns. And just work your way around, jumping from one side to another, crisscrossing them to tighten them up. That way, when you're collapsing your spring for your pressure plate, you're actually getting even pressure all the way around until you get them good and tight. Okay, we went around tightening all the bolts up. And I know somebody's going to ask what the factory specs are. I'll put them in the notation later, simply because, I mean, if I'm t this is for a 302, but if it's for a Jeep, it could be different bolt specs. So basically, the best thing I can tell you without causing you guys any issues, whatever car you're working on, be it a Jeep, be it a Chevrolet, be it a Ford, whatever, the information is online, so look up and see what your factory torque specs are. Alright, once you get everything tightened up, this alignment shaft here, snatch that baby out because you don't need it anymore. That was funny. It popped. <laughs> so anyway, now that clutch will not move. We're going to set the motor down a little bit. Then you take the transmission, slide it all up into it. And we're going to bring the transmission all into the car. Okay, once we got the clutch set, set up on the block, be sure. Look how sloppy that is. Throw-up bearing is done for. So here's how you change the throw-up bearing of these. If you look right here, it's a ball and socket type setup. So, now it's popped back in place, but that's actually where it's supposed to see. And whenever you push the clutch, you got a cable that goes from here to here. And whenever you push the clutch, it pulls this together. So therefore, see right there, it pushes your uh, clutch fingers, which rides against those little fingers right here. It pushes those in, disengages your clutch. And it all pivots off this ball right here. I really wish Jeep would do this. Well, it's mine anyway. As you see, that's how bad that bearing is. But now we need to take this bearing out. So what you do is grab right here, pull, it snaps back. Pull this forward, that slides off. Slide out the whole assembly. There it is. Then at this point, take your throw-out bearing, bring it back. This way, because you see those fingers right there? Basically what you got to do is get them on the other side of the fingers. But you got to, all right, people, I'm working with one hand. There. Y'all didn't see that, did you? 
do it. Give me just one second. Okay, let's do an instant replay on that. Well, maybe not quite so instant. Here's the assembly. What you want to do is, hands on your thaw up bearing. Golly, I think it's shot. Pull it back this way and watch it slide. And if you pull it this far, like that, and you tilt it the wrong way, he's going to hit against the fork here and it won't come off. Slide it back, bring it forward. This lip has to come below that lip. Looky, y'all, that slides right off. All right, let me get the new one out of the pack. We'll be right back. All right, look at here. New throw out bearing, obviously. This is the old one. Look at the difference. See? See how this wobbling like that? Look how tight this one is. No movement, no side to side movement. This is done for. That's trash. All right, here's your new one. And what you want to do is here, obviously, it needs to be wiped off at least. And I know y'all are going to blast me for, hey, you need to clean up better, but I'm not. I want it together. Get this out here, clean that ball up, pivot section out. Ta da! Same old grease. I love this stuff. Mainly it's because, I mean, it's a stream pressure, anesthesia. I mean, it's like an all in one, but it withstands heat so well, it doesn't burn off. So, pack a little bit of grease up in there. And really, at this point right here, on these pressure points, you really don't need much on that. Just wipe it off so you ain't going to have any loose crap going into your bearing. Alright, up in here. This pivot ball, wipe it off. Do a little visual inspection, make sure it's not excessively worn, which this one's not. Excessively worn would be, see where the pivot is right here where the shiny stuff stops? If you're getting shiny way back up in here, you need to check your, your arm or the pivot ball. One of the two is wearing pretty bad. And one of the two is going to have to be replaced, but this one's okay. Then you got your input shaft. Wipe it down good. Get all the crud. Make sure this is clean. Right here's where your pilot bearing runs up inside that uh, block. Put the black snot to it because you want that bearing to slide up and down that input shaft like, it, like it's supposed to. Then on your input shaft, because this is where your clutch plate rides at. Now if you forget to do this, it probably won't be the end of the world, but what it's going to do is really increase the longevity of your clutch parts. Increase the how smooth you shift, how, how good the clutch feels, all that stuff. So really, it doesn't take a whole lot of time for a little bit of preventive maintenance. Even though I shot it on the side of the fork there, I'm going to put a little bit on the pivot ball, uh, just for kicks and giggles, I guess. Because you see me put it on the fork. There we go. Now... Clutch, throw it, uh, the clutch arm, throw up bearing, slide it in at an angle like that. Slide it, pops right in. Pretty easy. Arm here, pivots back inside. This slides in like this. And back of these fingers are a little bit on the outside, but what you do is you get them in there. Most of the time you can pop them in place, but you may have to get a screwdriver and snap them back. Alright, there, that one's about seated. You still got your pivot ball on the outside. Then what you do on the outside where your clutch cable goes, smack it, pop it right in place. There's a throw-up bearing installed. Well, this little video here was all about how to set up the clutch, and I showed you how to use the, you know, putting in the pilot bearing, putting in the rear main seal, uh, how to seat your clutch with the alignment tool, and you know the proper sequence to tighten your bolts. And for the 5.0 Mustang T5s, this is a T5 transmission. How to set the uh, throw out bearing and everything in, grease and everything. But also, when you get your clutch kit, it comes with this little pack of grease right here that's almost actually an insult to your intelligence. So that's the reason I use my own stuff. So that's what the subject of the video is about now. We're going to set this uh, transmission to the block and get ready to drop it in. That I know she looks rough, she's been neglected for a while. But I'm bringing her back to life. So, anyway, the subject of the video was how to set the clutch. So, everybody, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to get my little pony put together. I got some more good Jeep videos coming up really soon. So, keep checking back. Peace out. See y'all.